We're working new details in a high-profile case in Rhode Island where a suspect in custody shot and killed a police detective with his own gun. You remember Esteban Carpio was convicted of first-degree murder for killing Detective James Allen. It was a calm spring night in Providence, Rhode Island on April 16, 2005. Families finished up dinner while friends met up for Saturday night plans. But the peace would soon be shattered by shocking violence. 26-year-old Esteban Carpio had a troubled past riddled with petty crimes and violent outbursts. In recent weeks, those close to him noticed increasingly paranoid behavior. Carpio became convinced that evil spirits were cursing him and trying to cause harm. Despite his family's efforts to get mental health treatment, his condition continued to deteriorate. That night, Carpio set out alone in a rented red minivan after dropping his girlfriend off downtown earlier. As he drove past a quiet suburban neighborhood around 9 p.m., he spotted 84-year-old Madeline Gatta standing alone in her driveway. An elderly woman alone at night seemed an easy victim for the disturbed Carpio. Carpio pulled his van to the curb half a block away and covered his face with a hat and scarf so only his eyes were visible. He grabbed a large hunting knife and slipped it into his jacket as he rushed toward Madeline with violent intent. Her piercing screams alerted neighbors as Carpio forcefully stabbed her in the upper back. As Madeline collapsed bleeding to the ground, Carpio sprinted back to his idling getaway van. A quick-thinking witness wrote down his license plate number as he raced off into the darkness. Carpio continued on to pick up his unsuspecting girlfriend, acting like nothing happened. Within an hour, police tracked down the suspicious red minivan outside Carpio's home. Though initially reluctant, his girlfriend helped coax him outside where he was immediately cuffed. Detectives James Allen and John McGeehan transported the suspect to headquarters on the third floor for intense interrogation. In the small windowless room, Carpio initially acted calm, giving the fake name Rosalino Carr and denying any knowledge of the stabbing. But as more evidence mounted, his cooperation faded. After 20 tense minutes, Allen briefly stepped out to get the agitated suspect water. In that instant, chaos erupted in the room. Detective McGeehan thrashed violently against the suddenly locked interrogation room door, desperate to get back inside. Carpio's enraged shouts echoed from within as the suspect had managed to trap Allen alone inside. He's got my gun! Allen's muffled cry rose above the commotion. The veteran detective's voice flooded with terror. He's going to kill me! McGeehan felt helpless hearing his colleague's desperate pleas for help just steps away. He screamed at backup officers sprinting down the hall to hurry as he continued battering the fortified metal door to no avail. The sickening blast of two gunshots rang out, leaving McGeehan frozen for an instant that felt like an eternity. Officers finally breached the door with a hydraulic ram, but the sight inside turned their blood cold. Slumped motionless beneath the one-way mirror in a spreading crimson pool was Detective James Allen, executed point-blank with his own service revolver that lay beside his limp hand on the cold, tile floor. Somehow, in the split second Allen stepped out, Carpio managed to overpower the seasoned homicide detective and steal his weapon. After executing Allen with two shots to the chest, Carpio fired a third bullet towards the window before leaping through the shattered glass into the rainy night three stories down. Inside the interrogation room, officers burst in to find Allen bleeding out from two gunshots while Carpio's stolen revolver lay on the floor. Despite desperate medical efforts, Allen tragically succumbed to his wounds early the next morning. A frenzied manhunt ensued across Providence to find the cop killing Carpio, now loose on the streets, injured and desperate. Carpio tried unsuccessfully to recruit an acquaintance for a ride out of state. Just an hour after the cold-blooded attack, a SWAT team surrounded a nearby house where Carpio attempted to hide. Carpio violently resisted arrest requiring tasers and a brawl with officers to finally take him into custody. His face was left battered and bruised between the three-story fall and intense struggle to subdue him. Doctors treated his extensive injuries as Carpio was held without bail on first-degree murder charges. A few days later at his initial court hearing, Carpio was forced to wear a protective mask which the police claimed was to prevent him from spitting at officers. However, Carpio's family accused authorities of covering up injuries caused by beating him as unlawful retaliation for killing a cop. The FBI launched a civil rights investigation around Carpio's violent apprehension and arrest. After reviewing evidence and officer accounts, 
investigators determined his wounds directly resulted from the three-story leap and intense struggle to take him into custody, clearing law enforcement of any violations. As the grief-stricken people of Providence mourned the horrific loss of respected veteran detective James Allen, his accused killer Esteban Carpio sat relegated behind bars awaiting trial for first-degree murder. The 55-year-old Allen was a beloved father of three children and husband who spent over 25 honorable years serving the city he called home on the police force. He was known as a consummate professional who led by quiet example and always had a smile for everyone. Hundreds of solemn community members, young and old, lined the streets under a gray New England sky to bid a final farewell as Allen's flag-draped casket passed by. Bagpipes sang Amazing Grace as the procession made its way to the cemetery where he was laid to rest with full police honors. A 21-gun salute echoed through the hills as Allen's grief-stricken family wept, watching his casket lowered into the ground. The two eldest Allen children gently tossed white roses atop the coffin holding their selfless father who perished in the line of duty protecting the public. An eternal flame now burns outside police headquarters, so Detective James Allen's courageous sacrifice for Providence shall never be forgotten. Two intense weeks of dramatic testimony teetered between portraying Carpio as a mentally disturbed killer or ruthless cop murderer. While Carpio's defense team argued his documented mental health struggles proved he was insane during the crimes, prosecution witnesses vividly recounted his violent actions. Several family members and psychiatrists testified Carpio had been exhibiting increasingly detached, paranoid behavior. They argued his disturbed mind meant he was unable to control himself and, therefore, innocent by reason of insanity. However, prosecution psychiatrists strongly contested Carpio met Rhode Island's strict legal definition of insanity. Though mentally ill, they stated he understood the consequences and wrongfulness of his horrific actions. After three painstaking days weighing complex moral questions around punishment versus compassion, the jury returned with their verdict, guilty on all counts. Carpio simply lowered his head as Detective Allen's weeping family embraced the first step toward justice for his senseless murder. At his sentencing hearing, a tearful yet seemingly remorseless Carpio apologized to the Allen family and community. But the judge showed no leniency given Carpio's extensive criminal history, issuing the maximum punishment of life imprisonment without parole. While the city sought closure from the brutal tragedy, Carpio faced spending the rest of his days locked away like an awful memory everyone wished to forget. His cold-blooded actions earned him a permanent place in a tiny cell removed from society, left alone to contemplate how one night of violence forever destroyed so many lives. The horrific events of that April night in Providence left two devastated families and a community in mourning. Though the legal system delivered swift and severe justice upon Esteban Carpio, true healing from such vicious brutality remains elusive. Detective Allen will always be remembered as a loving family man and honorable officer dedicated to service. While Carpio serves as a haunting symbol of the darkness potentially lurking within any mind neglected or unchecked, 